Hey, welcome back. My name is Otto, and today we're going to learn how to set and access environmental variables in Next.js. Let's get to it. All right, so today we're going to learn how to work with environment variables in Next.js. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about why you would want to use environment variables in the first place. Environment variables allow us to store information that our application needs outside of the application. This data is then loaded when we compile the application. So instead of hard coding API keys or authentication keys or any uh, you know, private information that we necessarily wouldn't want in our application, we can store it in an environment variable and have access to it just the same. There are many more uses for environment variables, such as having a different set of configuration for your development versus your staging versus your production environment. So instead of issuing different keys to your entire development team, they can all use the same one, yet the variables are not in any GitHub repo or you know, exposed elsewhere. And Next.js makes working with environment variables very, very easy. So to get started, I have a a uh, basic Next.js application created. All I did was run npx create next app, and I think I called it variables. And I run npm run dev just to build the application and see if it runs, and it does. So we are ready to get started. So to get started with environment variables in Next.js, all we need to do is create a file to store our environment variables. And this file is called .env.local. So just by having this file in our directory, when Next.js builds the application, it's going to load it and all of the properties within it. Now, when it comes to defining environment variables for Next.js, all we do is simple key value pairs. So let's say we wanted to have a private authentication key called, you know, private API key. So we would just say private, a say private API key equals one, two, three, four, five. Hit save. And then for any additional environment variables we want, we just add additional lines with the keys. And the naming here doesn't really matter too much. By convention, environment variables are all caps, but nothing prevents us from having uh, a lowercase environmental variable such as such as uh, API key, for example, six, seven, eight, seven, eight, A, B, C. So now our Next.js application has these two environment variables. So to access them, let's stop our application and let's restart it. And now you'll see that we have a message when we run npm run, run dev that says loaded env from the variables.env.local. So now we know that these environment variables are loaded and available to our Next.js application. But where can we use them? We can use environment variables in both our pages as well as our API routes. Let's say we want to access the environment variables in our index route. We can access it directly in our component, but there is a way around that and I'll talk about that in just a little bit. But if we did want access to our environment variable, we could add a get server side props or get static props methods. And from there, we would be able to access the environment variables. So let's just see an example of this. I'll create a new export async function called get server side props. And we're not going to pass any arguments to it. We're just going to console log our environment variable. So we have our get server side props method. It also returns an object, which is props. And we'll just say hello world here. So we have to return props in this get server side props method, or it's going to complain at us. But you know, I don't really care about the prop. We're not going to be using it in our application. I just want to show you how you can access the environment variables. To access our environment variables, we would use the built-in process.env property. And then off of here, we can key off of the individual keys we have, private API key or auth API key. So let's do this private API key, and we can um, add it here. And just to make sure that this works, let's just console log it out. We'll hit save and let's go into our application, refresh it and see what we get for this private API key. So I'll go in here, hit refresh. My application runs just the same, no changes there. But if we look at my console log and I'll pull it up a little bit here, uh, you'll be able to see one, two, three, four, five, which is the one, two, three, four, five from my private API key. So this is a very simple way to work with environment variables in Next.js without 
having to hard code API keys, uh, service domains, or anything else that you necessarily don't want to hard code in your Next.js application. Now, typically when we use environment variables, we are storing data that we do not want to make public. We do not want the end user to ever be able to access this. But there is also a use case where you may want to expose some environment variables in your application to your browser application, to the React components, and use it in the application. And one example of this might be your Google Analytics tag. So rather than hard coding it in your Next.js application, you may want to store it in an environment variable. So, so when you deploy your application across your different servers, they can have the correct analytics code and track the correct information. And surprise, surprise, Next.js makes this very, very easy for us as well. And to do this, all we have to do is prepend our environment variable name with a special predefined Next.js uh, configuration name. And that name is next underscore public underscore. And then whatever we put after here is going to be the actual um, key that, that we want to implement. So let's say we had a Google Analytics ID. So let's say GAID. And that is you know, just a random string. So next, let's see how we can access this next public GAID in our React component in our Next.js application. So I'll go back to the index.js, which is our main and only component in this application. To access our Google Analytics ID anywhere within our Next.js application, whether it's the component, you know, server-side props, uh, and a backend API, we can easily access it using process.env and then just passing the name of that variable. So let's console log it here from our home component. So I'll say console.log process.env.next underscore public underscore and then GAID. We'll hit save and let's go back into our application and see if we are able to access this Google Analytics ID. So I'll go in my application, open up the console here. Let's hit refresh. We'll do a hard refresh and there it is. So this is the public environment variable that we set in our .env.local file, and we are able to access it in our React component as part of the Next.js framework. But what if we tried accessing one of the other environment variables, say, you know, this private API key, or let's say this auth API key, which should be uh, private and should only be accessible to our backend. If we were to try to do this, we are going to get an undefined. But let's try it anyway. So I have process.env.auth API key. We'll go into my application, hit refresh, and again, we get undefined. But we can access it in our backend. So let's say here in our get server side props method, which runs only on the backend and is never exposed to the browser. We'll replace it here, hit save. And if we refresh, we can see the 89 ABC, which is the 89 ABC that we had uh, set the environment variable to. So two more things I wanna cover on environment variables before we wrap up this video. The first is your environment variables, you can access them in your API routes just the same. So if we go into our API route here into hello, we are able to access them just the same. So let's say, um, we'll just console log it here process.env. Let's say, um, you know, this auth API key. If we call the API, we'll go API, hello, we get a successful response. And here we have, um, let's see, 89 ABC. And again, the next public GAID, -G we can also access in our API routes and on the back end if we needed that information for, for any reason. So let's just confirm that that does work. I will paste it in here, hit refresh, and there it is. Cool. And the final thing I want to talk about is this env local. So, you know, this env.local file that we created is for our local environment, but we can create additional environment files, you know, for our production, for our staging development and, and different servers. And all we have to do is just name it accordingly. So we can create a .env development for say our development or testing server. And this one might have different environment variables that we load depending on the configuration. 
And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you learned how to use environment variables in your Next.js application, and I hope that this was uh, useful to you. That's it for me. I will see you next time.